All right, guys, it looks like we are live. Uh, welcome. I am Scott. This is Drawing Together with Artists Network. So welcome back. We meet every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and as you can see in the picture below me, uh, this is what we're drawing today, this drawing of a leaf. Um, I did this preparatory drawing to kind of get myself ready. So if you're following along, uh, you can find the reference image below in the description, as well as links to Artist Network, where you can find additional resources and share your work when you're done. So I'm really excited about this one. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of timely in terms of, uh, you know, it's the time of year when we see these leaves changing color. Here in uh, northern Colorado, there's a lot of really good color this year. Um, I sure miss being back in New England, though, where it's... I've heard it's even better this year. So welcome everybody. I see people calling in or you know viewing from all over the place. Um, before we get started, I want to address some of the questions here. So um, if you are new, um, just know that you can ask questions throughout. I'm going to do my best to follow the chat and and um, and answer as we go. Um, as you can see, the joy um, typed in already in all caps. That is really helpful for me to identify them as questions. So thank you, Joy. Your question is: Is it ebony pencil? Um, it, uh, is it close to graphite or is it charcoal? And if you don't have that, what do you recommend? So it's a good opportunity for me to go over the materials. I have my erasers, my kneaded eraser, and I have this plastic eraser. A rubber racer will work as well. Um, and I'm keeping it simple today. Uh, so I have my ebony pencil and I have this white chalk. Um, so ebony is graphite. Um, it is a very soft graphite and you can find actually variations in an ebony pencil from you know like a jet black um, versus kind of a just a normal uh, kind of regular um, graphite uh, or ebony pencil. Got a little distracted here because I'm missing my shading stump. Here it is. Um, so I've also got my, or my blending stump here that I'm going to be using throughout this as well. So if you don't have an ebony pencil, if you have like a 4B or a 6B pencil, an 8B pencil, that will work. If you just have a regular number 2 pencil, that will also work. This can also apply to charcoal. So the idea behind this series is that, you know, I'm choosing specific materials for each demonstration and you're, you know, welcome to follow along with that. But all of these concepts should be transferable to other media as well. So um, hopefully these are broad enough um, kind of tips that you can apply it to whatever medium you're comfortable with. So let's get back at it. I love seeing all the comments here. Um, you know, comments are a great way to help kind of boost this show. So if you like the show and you really want um, people to watch, the more comments we have going on, it, it, YouTube looks at it and says, hey, this, this is something people like, and they, they share it in other people's feeds. So the, my, my goal is to share this with as many people as possible. So we're going to dig right into it. As you can see, I've got this toned paper, this gray toned Strathmore paper that I've been using quite a bit. Um, and I wanted to do that because I wanted to explore the way I can use white um, charcoal or white chalk to help reveal this and the light and the form of the leaf. There's a delicacy to this and there's a texture to it that I really want to try to capture. And this is a, is a tool that we can or, um, that we can use, we can apply to other media as well. So the whole point of the series is that we're choosing subjects, we're drawing together um, in a way that that allows us to boost our skills. Uh, I'm trying to push my my um, my techniques, my, my skills, my understanding of value, light, color, all of these things. I'm trying to take that and build my own skill set and hopefully yours as well. And in this case, what, I, what I'm thinking is going to be really helpful is to explore that texture of that leaf. The way the light is um, kind of, it's reflecting off of it and it's, there's also a translucency to it. Um, there's a delicacy to it that I want to try to capture and then hopefully that will apply to other things as well. So that's what we're looking for here. Um, all right, I see a, another Mainer, Lily Bay. I don't know if that's in reference to Moosehead Lake. I used to go camping up there all the time. It'd be a great time of year to be up there now. Um, all right, sweater weather. And I see you, Rachel. I saw the Surrey. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. So um, let's get at it. Most of this is going to be done using the ebony pencil. Now, when doing the preparatory sketch, what was tricky for me initially is this layout and the getting the, the proportions right. Um, and it, it kind of occurred to me that, you know, in a, in a drawing like this, what I like about these organic forms is that it allows me to be a little bit more flexible in terms of those proportions. We talk about that a lot in this series, the idea that 
um, using my approach to drawing, and the reason I draw this way is it puts me in in control over how accurate I want to be and um, how much detail I want to be. I want to kind of incorporate into the the drawing. Uh, so the I, the general idea that I like to kind of convey is the idea that. We want the drawing to emerge on the page. We want it to kind of develop in front of us. So we're thinking about some of the big ideas. Um, we're coming to the subject having a general understanding of what it is. You know, we know immediately looking at it that it's a leaf. Um, and we don't need to really study each and every detail to come to that conclusion. Our brain is processing all of those details um, and is just sending us to, sending to our conscious mind the understanding that it's a leaf. It's taking all of those details, processing it, and keeping it locked in our subconscious mind. And so the drawing process is a way for us to explore what's in there. What are all the little things that our brain interpreted in a split second to tell us that that's a leaf? And it takes time to develop that, um, and the drawing process is a way to do that, to make that happen. Um, so. I'm just recording some initial thoughts right now using the side of the pencil so I'm not, um, I'm not creating hard lines here. I'm just using the weight of the pencil and its side, letting that, that material float on the surface of the paper and I'm reacting to the form in a very gestural way. A gesture is just an initial reaction to the form and it's really important that you can capture a lot of your impression of the subject in a gesture. Um, and once we have information on the page, then we can start to make specific decisions about what needs to change. Um, and so I'm going to keep this initial drawing on here, and as I go through, I'm going to gradually refine the, the proportions. Um, so I've got the initial layout here. I can look at it and evaluate, is it sitting on the page in an effective way? And as you can see, I've kind of, I'm going to leave out some of the additional leaves. The full reference photo is actually much wider, so you can you know, choose for yourself how much you want to include of that whole scene. In this case, I'm just isolating that leaf, and I'm allowing everything else in the scene to just fall away from my, my kind of consciousness there. Um, <clears throat> And, and just focusing on this as a leaf study. And so as I'm going through there, what I'm also observing is that there's an opportunity to define key points that are gonna help me to control the proportion. So I'm looking at curves, um, end, and kind of end points. And so there's like this notch here in this maple leaf. Um, and, then, and then there are these points that I can start to relate to one another. And right now I'm kind of making a mental note and I'm holding in my mind the idea that these are not correct. They're getting closer and closer as I make multiple passes through and around the leaf. But I don't want to, I don't want to get stuck in any one area at this point. Um, I, I just want to react to things. So, I, for example, as I'm looking at this now, I've started to place in this center line here, and I can see the initial lines I had for this lower edge. And looking at it, I can realize that the proportions are off. Just by, by looking at it, I know that that's not correct. So then I can start to apply some additional tools, like angle sighting. And that's you know, aligning the, the pencil with the edge of the object, carrying it over to the drawing, and seeing how it, how it matches up with the reference photo. And now as I'm doing this, I can see that the scale at which I'm working is not going to fit on the page. It's going to run off. Uh, so now I need to shrink things down. <clears throat> so as we go through this, what I can do is set myself an anchor. Uh, I'm going to set myself a point that doesn't change throughout the drawing and then adjust everything else around that. So we're only a few minutes into the drawing and I've already developed uh, an understanding of some, it's a really key understanding about the form um, and I haven't spent a whole lot of time in the detail and that, that's, that's why I approach drawing in this way, thinking very gesturally at first and broadly at first and then moving into the details uh, because it allows me to um, learn from my mistakes very early on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this as my anchor, this notch between on the kind of the third main portion of the, the body here of the leaf. And I can realize that this side can come in. And 
and you can see I'm not really drawing curves as much as it sequences of short straight lines. And it, what's funny is that this is exactly what happened to my preparatory drawing. I actually started too small and I kept getting larger and larger <laughs> and it kept running off the page. And I'm, I'm finding myself making the same decisions. Um, it, it's like kind of like deja vu. And I'm like, oh yeah, I already did this and I'm not, I hadn't learned from it. <laughs> uh, so um, it's it just kind of an interesting observation for me to make. So I can bring the center stem up a little bit. I'm going to find the general angle. Looks like it's pretty close to it. And I can ask myself, how actually, how accurate do I want to be? Now I'm at a point right now where perhaps that anchor shifts. I, I kind of locked this in, but I think perhaps it needs to move up. So I'm really just trying to find the big forms right now. And if my marks are loose and light enough, um, then you know I don't have to worry about kind of keeping the drawing clean. I think that's something that I've, I noticed with many students um, new to drawing, uh, they get to a point of kind of preciousness a little bit too early. Um, and some of those early marks can feel a little bit too permanent. So if you know, that's one of the reasons I like to use the side of the pencil in these initial gestures is because it allows the, the marks to kind of float on the surface more. Ah, here we go. This is some of these older marks that's kind of throwing me off. So what I'm, one of the things I'm also doing is trying to be aware of vertical and horizontal edges, uh, kind of plumb lines. So for example, if I take this inner kind of notch here and I draw a plumb line down, a vertical line from that, that I can see where it should intersect this bottom edge here. Um, and then if I have this, uh, this end of the, this point of the leaf here established, I can carry a horizontal line across, compare that to the reference photo and see, it, see where it should be intersecting. It makes very general kind of statements about that form. And then I get down to this bottom point here and I can do another vertical line and see where that runs up. And I can see that this point here, the bottom edge should be just to the right of the, where the stem kind of enters the leaf there. And that seems to be about correct. And then once we get those general forms established, we can go through and, and gradually make them more specific. Now, one of the things that, that is kind of uh, important here, too, is that we've talked a lot about how we approach drawings, um, you know, whether we're taking a linear approach or if we're thinking more in terms of shape. And um, in, in this case, you can see that I'm really taking more of a linear approach. I'm starting with the contour of the form and then moving my way in, and that's because um, there's not a whole lot to really sink my teeth into in this, this form. Um, and and I, it's just kind of an instinct, I guess, to, to start with the, the outer edges. I'm taking this leftmost point here and comparing it. And what can happen, too, is my sense of scale can really vary. So. It's important to constantly do check-ins across the form um, because as I get absorbed in, say, this one section over here and I lose sight of how it fits in with everything else, I can, it's easy for me to get this scale incorrect. And I feel like that's what I've done here. So I need to double check that um, against the reference photo. Let's see, is that angle right? I guess that angle is correct here. The other thing that's happening is that because I'm looking at it at an angle here, it's skewing my perspective my, on the drawing. So I have to rely on the screen in front of me, that's what you're seeing, um, to help me correct my proportions. And then and again, I have to ask myself, how, how precise do I need to be? Is this about this specific leaf or is it about leaves in general?
All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm just going to take a break, see if there's any questions. Everybody chiming in from where you are viewing. It is awesome to see people from all over the world. I love seeing all the familiar names, and I've seen a lot of you share your work on Artist Network, um, and it's been awesome to see that. So I do try to check on those things. If you do have specific questions you'd like me to address in your work, I'm happy to do that on, uh, on the web page there. So each episode has its own page, uh, and on that page you'll find a discussion thread um, where you can share your work, and we see some really amazing drawings. Um, all right, so I think the rough form is looking pretty good. As you can see, it's, it's really quite messy, so there'll be a lot of eraser work to kind of clean things up. Um, now I'm going to take another pass at, at this, and I want to be really mindful of what I was just saying about not getting too absorbed in this specific area. The mind has a way of bringing focus into one area at the exclusion of everything else. Um, and it's a natural instinct to look at like one particular part in the leaf, and in that moment when you're focusing on that, everything else falls away. And so I have to force myself to expand my awareness to everything else in the, in the rest of the form. And throughout the whole drawing process, it's this constant fluctuation between sharp focus and kind of broad observations. So then I'm, when I'm placing these details, I want to do a quick check-in to see where am, I, where am I relative to other forms. And in particular, doing a kind of a vertical check-in um, and a kind of a diagonal. So I've got these two points here forming, for example. I can determine what angle that is, and I can compare that to then the drawing. And I can move up to the next point, and I can do then another check-in across there to see how that aligns with this one. Um, and do a check-in with the, the angle there. That's called angle sighting. And I'm finding that in, in this drawing, I'm going to be using that tool more than comparative measuring. Because uh, I don't have a specific form in here that I can use as a base unit of measure. Um, if comparative measuring is a tool, a, a term that you're not familiar with, let me know and I can um, uh, I can try to clarify that a little bit. Let me do a quick check in. Uh -huh, I feel like this needs to come in just a little bit. So I'm going to try to do my best to talk through these decisions I'm making, but hopefully it becomes apparent what I'm when I'm doing it. So when I was working on this point here, I did a quick check in to see that point below it because you can I can see in the reference photo that they're stacked right on top of one another. And I'm kind of working my way around the, the drawing, gradually correcting it. So I'm going to work my way over to this next kind of point here. In this case, I kind of found it easier if, I, if I've identified this far left point, or right point over here and I determine the next point, if I can place that properly, then I can fill in the gap between them. And then I can do the same with this next point over here. And kind of work through the drawing and then do a quick check-in with this lower, any landmarks below it, this lower portion. And I'm trying to do my best to kind of think, talk through all the, the thinking because it, and I'm sure that you'll, you're observing this as well in your own drawing. At first, these individual decisions become, you know, they almost overwhelming. There's so many little decisions you make. But over time, as you practice, they start to become kind of second nature. And so if I'm, if I'm doing anything on the drawing, that you're confused by, let me know um, and I can try to identify what, what it is because it, sometimes it just, it's hard to, to become aware of, of what, what is ultimately kind of has become second nature. I don't like how tight that is up at the top, but I don't want to go through the process of fixing it. So I'm just going to be upfront by that because I want to move this drawing along. So compositionally, I see an issue there, but 
Um, uh, I think adjusting everything at this point um, is not going to bring you a whole lot of new things to consider. But if um, if you're at the stage and you're working on your own drawing, um, kind of do a do a quick check in to make sure that it's not too tight against those against those edges. Diane saying you're out there yesterday picking up the perfect leaves. That's awesome. Yeah, I know here in Colorado, it's been an interesting year, um, but we've had some good color. Okay, here, I wanna go, get back down to this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find this inner curve here. I'm gonna do an angle site, okay. I'm just looking at this angle here. I'm gonna do a, draw a plumb line to see where it intersects vertically. And that's pretty darn close. I feel like I've placed that properly. And so now I can, I can just focus on this area here. I've got that general form. And one of the things that's also really fascinating about this, and I think this would have a lot of relevance in figure drawing, is observing these kind of compound curves. So for example, if I look at this, there's a general curve, kind of concave curve here. But as, as you look in it, it, it more closely, it, it almost feels like it switches to slightly convex on this side here. So you can kind of look for the overall form and then start to break that form down. And that's really what's ultimately gonna make this come to life is if you can observe those and make those curves more specific. Uh, so if I look at this curve in here, for example, once I've placed this point, I can kind of break that down into more specific forms. So it's not just a symmetrical curve. There's some nuance to it. Like I said, and that, that is something that you observe a lot in figure drawing and portraiture, you know, drawing things like hands and feet. That's something that Degas was a really, a, really a master at. Um, he could convey so much information about the form just by looking at that contour line. And he picked that up from Angra um, by studying Angra. Um, I'm going to switch back to this kind of modified grip here. And I'm trying to be very actually soft with these marks. And I like an ebony pencil because it can leave a mark without putting too much pressure on the page. And I find that it's ultimately easier to erase that way versus using a harder graphite early on. Um, I've never been much of a fan, you know, personally, it hasn't really worked for me to, um, to use a variety of graphite pencils. So say like a 4H for lighter lines, um, you know, an HB or a 2B for kind of mid-tones, and then a 6B or an 8B for the darker values. And I've seen some amazing artists work that way, but it's never really worked for me in, in particular because those earlier lines using a, a harder material tend to become kind of more permanent. Um, and I, I find I actually like using a soft material lightly um, versus a hard material that is naturally light, if that makes sense. Oops, and I'll take that up. And so you can see how, how easily these marks erase off when I need to. All right, so I'm feeling pretty good about the contour drawing here. And one of the things I have to keep in mind, I just reminded myself, is that some of these edges are actually gonna be white. So I'm gonna be able, to, I'm gonna erase off that line and apply the white charcoal, the white chalk to it. So I'm gonna keep that fairly light. 
Um, I also want to remind everybody that you know with a with a contour line drawing, you're the line represents the, a three-dimensional form. So this is a great opportunity to start to really think of this as a three-dimensional form. You know, it's very flat. It's, you know, naturally, there's not a lot of volume to it. But if we can start to see how it curves through the space, um, we can start to pay attention to those edges and how they might help us represent that. Okay. And now I want to get these, these inner, the kind of the skeleton of the the leaf established. And that inner skeleton um, is integrated with that outer edge, right? So it's this outer edge is that specific shape because of the way that inner skeleton has been formed. Um, so I want to use that as a way to, to really kind of understand the form of the structure. Um, so I'm kind of I'm trying to identify two points. Where does it where does each line originate from its main stem and where does it um, intersect with the outer contour? And I'm, right now I'm just kind of mapping those out. In some clay cases I'll actually be defining those using a white, using the white material. And in some cases um, it'll be dark. So, But at this point I'm just kind of trying to identify the paths that I'm observing. So right in here, for example, the light is striking on some of those lines, um, and so those will be a little bit lighter. So what you can see me doing is doing kind of quick check-ins from between those two points to see uh, where I'm at before I strike. Um, And move my eyes quickly back and forth between the reference photo and the drawing. And, and I, I've talked about this before in the series, but um, the way I try to visualize it is when I'm looking at the reference photo, I'm really trying to observe the specific angle, the form. I'm trying to predict. I'm doing a quick kind of run through in my mind about how I want to make that mark. And when I look at the page, my goal is mostly to determine where am I, make sure I'm in the right spot, and then trusting that the mark is going to come out the way I want it to. And I'm trying to do two things at once. So when, when I'm drawing here, I still have some awareness of the reference photo. Um, there's a kind of a use of peripheral vision throughout the whole process. So when I'm looking at the reference photo, I can also be aware of the movement of my hand. Um, and when I'm looking at the drawing, I can be aware of angles and forms that I'm seeing out of my periphery. All right. Hello, everybody. People from all over. Um, Medieval Peasant is asking, what is a higher quality material, a Conte or a charcoal? I honestly, I don't know. They are very different. Conte is a more permanent kind of oily, waxy substance. Um, I believe it's wax. Um, and then charcoal, of course, is, is charcoal, is burnt wood. Um, and they're both, you know, it, they're both great materials to work with. Um, I would, if you're worried about quality, at that point, I would be most concerned with the paper to make sure that it's kind of acid-free and archival. Um, but they're both going to work out really well. Okay, so now I need to map out the value structure. And what do I want to do here? I want to squint my eyes and try to observe basic shadow forms. And one of, one of the things that really stands out to me is right in here, there's a translucency to, to the leaf. And I'm trying to observe the difference in value between what's happening here and then what's happening over here and here. Um, where is the light kind of striking and reflecting off the surface? And where does it seem like it's actually more translucent? And it's really challenging with this one, with the way the light is coming in from the side and the way the leaf kind of twists through the space, it's hard to determine what's what. Um, but I do notice that like in this area, it seems to be more of a translucent area um, versus this where it's more opaque. And I want to try to convey that somehow. 
so I think my initial I think my initial goal is to break up those two forms, and then um, and then we'll uh, and I'll use my eraser to lift off some of those areas and apply the the white only to the areas that I feel like are more opaque, like over in this area. There's some highlights over here. Um, so I need to kind of think, think through that a little bit. So I'm going to use the side of my material so I make broad marks. Um, somebody who posted um, to the Artist Network page sharing some work uh, had a question about kind of building up areas of value. In this, in this case, it was the background um, without, allow, you know, without having too many marks show up especially. And so I can kind of talk through that a little bit here. But you can see how much I'm using the side of the pencil here. I'm rolling it in my fingers as I go, and that helps to reduce the amount of the visibility of the hatch marks. There's kind of a darkness coming down through here, so I'm trying to think about just those broad forms, squinting a lot so I can see the shapes a bit more clearly. And even though this is going to be lighter, I'm actually going to block in this form here across here, and I want to try to visualize this. There's a kind of a, a shadow core right in here where it gets darker. So it, 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 we have an intense light here rolling into a shadow core a little bit darker and then across this broad area where it's in shadow but there's also translucency. Um, and I'm trying to observe those, those things here. And I'm not being very precious with the edge because we're going to deal with those edges a little bit later and clean that up. So even though we've gone through the process of blocking in, uh, uh, not blocking in, but laying in the, the, uh, the contour lines here, we're going to actually take more passes at it to make it more specific as we go through. And there's really a distinct shadow here. So thinking very broadly, then we're going to go back through and, and um, intensify it. Alright, so this whole area here, and again, I can go right up to the edges. I'm going to use my eraser to clean up those edges a little bit later. And then I think I'll, this whole area is really, I think it's in shadow, and it's just translucent. It's really difficult to tell. And this is where a photograph is a little challenging. If I was in person, I think I'd have a better understanding of it. But I'm getting going right over those edges. Um, if you change up the direction of your marks, that helps helps to reduce the the uh, the expression of marks used in the cross hatching. And now this is an opportunity for me to also start thinking about that background. I know I want this to be light, so maybe I can drop in some value here, and I do some negative drawing create some contrast here by darkening that background, and I know this is going to be, I'm going to ink, lighten it up using the, um, the chalk. So right now I'm really just using the weight of the pencil to build up these values. And then where else do I want to, I kind of like the idea of it, of playing with that background, darkening this area and then maybe darkening this area as well against this lighter, um, that lighter edge. And I'm not being very precious with that edge. That's what the eraser is for. I'm going to be able to cut into that to make it more precise. So if I take this, just use my kneaded eraser to kind of lift that off. Yeah, I'm starting to, to create some of that, that variation. Now one of the things, we've talked about this before in other drawings on toned paper, is that I'm, I'm starting to become aware of the fact that my eye is calibrating to the gray um, and wanting to treat, treat these areas as white. Um, and I just have to remind myself that we're going to really expand the value range, expand the tonal range by, um, by adding that white later. So I have to kind of be kind of laying groundwork here and, and try, to, try to predict a little bit what's going to happen. Um, I just saw some other questions here.
Um, and a uh, question about colored Conte crayons. I, I think it's great to use all of them. I did a lot of Conte work um, in my undergrad years and I really liked it. Um, I had a roommate who did some amazing work with Conte on toned paper and that was really rich, um, really nice stuff. So, um, but I think you wanna use what works for you personally. All of these principles apply. The challenge to it, I think, is is, is worthy for everybody to kind of consider is with, with, a, with something permanent like Conte, it forces you to think a little bit differently. Um, I, I like to be more manipulative of my, my materials, be both additive and subtractive in the process. And Conte crayons don't really allow for that. You have to, it's purely additive. And so you have to be very mindful before you make your marks as where everything is. Um, there's a permanence to it. So I, you can't really kind of massage the form and use the eraser like I'm doing here. Actually, and then actually what I might do is kind of tone this background here against this light that's striking up there. So I'm gonna drop in some value here. And use the eraser to kind of lift off some of those forms. All right, now what can we do? Um, D. Artist Flame is asking a question about the schedule. So we're gonna keep continue to do drawing together every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, and we are launching a new series with artist Gigi Chen. It'll be painting together. It'll be uh, acrylic painting, and those will be on Thursdays starting on the 22nd. So um, I'm looking really looking forward to that. So check those out. We're gonna have information coming out on Artist Network about that soon. But I think you will all enjoy it. She is a... She's a, a, she's a great painter and has a lot of really um, great things to say about art making, making it fun and informative. Okay, now I'm just trying to look at some of the areas where I can get a little bit darker. And again, I'm keeping my observations very broad at this point. You can see I'm still using this overhand grip. Um, Still doing a lot of squinting. We're going to refine this as we go. And I think in the end, it's going to be highly detailed. So stick with us if you want to see that come together. If you can't, if you have to leave, um, then just know that this goes up as a recording. Um, and I love seeing comments there as well. Um, and as I'm making these marks, I'm trying to be aware of the direction of my marks. Is there, if I'm noticing any directional marks there, and I'm not really, which is good. If I was, and I want to, I would want to make sure that it's really aligning with the form. I think this could go a little bit darker in here. So the idea is that I want this, this drawing to emerge on the page. It should feel like it's just gradually coming together, coming into focus. All right. Uh, Monday classes, I don't know if we're going to do Monday classes. I know Johannes is going to be doing another um, painting demonstration on a Tuesday, I believe the 27th. Um, but perhaps Mondays will be a thing. We're trying to see what works for people. All right, so now I have my blending stump. And while I'm blending, I'm also... It's not just about um, kind of smoothing out the marks. I'm trying to use this as a way to define the form. So as I'm kind of creating some of these darker areas, I'm letting the, letting the material kind of roll in my fingers so that I have kind of clean, not clean, but like new areas that are of, of graphite there. So this thing is so loaded with graphite that it's becoming a, of, and a very effective tool for making marks and contributing to the form. So that's really what I'm most concerned with is now starting to add some of those details in here as I start to observe these patches of light and dark. And if it's making too light of a mark, try rolling it to get to a new area of the material. Um, 
And uh, what, I'm think what I'm thinking is that this is going to be kind of more of a middle value. I'm going to have to come back in with um, my graphite, with my ebony pencil, and darken in some more areas again. If you're following along, I'd love to hear how your drawing is coming together. Is it working out for you? Are you getting stuck anywhere? And, you know, I'm working at the pace that I work at. You may find that you need to stick with an area longer, for example, or you may be just patiently waiting. <laughs> you may be already past this point here. Um, so if you have any thoughts about that, I'd be curious to see. You know, I, I, that mantra that I, I have running through my head is that marks are thoughts. You know, we all work at a different pace. We all process information in slightly different ways. And that gets reflected in the drawing. Uh, Mary Adams is asking, when will the acrylic uh, classes start? They are, the first one is going to be on the 22nd. So not tomorrow, but the week after on Thursday. And she will be painting a flower, an acrylic. So I'm working with her right now to kind of get that, everything ready for it. So I'm really excited about that. All right, so as I'm going through this, I can see some areas where um, where I'm going to pull out my eraser and kind of clean up, but I'm going to let that sit for now. I'm going to keep going through in this pass um, and try to observe some basic areas of light and shadow. And there's this kind of blotchiness to it that, you know, I'm not going to be super precise. If I'm working in the right region, I can see where it's more concentrated than others and I'm just going to let the material kind of do its thing underneath my, my fingers here. <clears throat> Let me see, back over to this area here. I'm going to have to darken this a bit. And I'm trying to observe where are these areas of light and dark, where there's harder edges and where there's softer. Hello, Jerry's Artorama. Thank you for those comments, Jerry's. I love shopping at the Jerry's up in Fort Collins. That's my go-to store. I believe everything I'm using was purchased there. Um, Manchester, UK. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Cindy is asking, what is the ebony pencil? Um, you know, so an ebony pencil is a graphite material that's just very soft. Um, and I don't, this is, it says the Soho Urban Artist. I don't know where I got this one from. I typically use ones that are uh, like a Prismacolor made, I believe. Um, and I really like those. You see there's kind of a blotchiness just naturally because of the tooth of the paper. So... Um, I'm going to try to let some of that be, but I'm going to actually go back through this and um, I'm going to kind of play with that a little bit more. And one of the things that I'm also tr trying to think of when I'm using this um, blending stump is try to be thinking in terms of light and shadow. Um, as much as, as possible rather than kind of line. And one of, we've talked about that before in the series is that lines generally represent edges. And when the viewer looks at the drawing and perceives marks as lines, it's often interpreted as an edge. And that's why drawings can fall apart. If there's too much line work um, in there, uh, it can confuse the mind because the mind is trying to make sense of it all. And seeing all these lines and saying, hey, those, are all, those should all be separate objects. And, and, but it's a very subtle uh, difference when we observe thin marks as shadows. And I feel like this blending stump does a better job at creating marks that read as shadows rather than versus edges. So hopefully that makes sense and one of the things that I'm kind of thinking about a, a lot when I'm working. All right, you can see some of the edges are degrading. 
uh, and that's that's good. Uh, you know, some of these areas I'm actually going to be using the white to redefine that edge, so I'm not worried too much about that. Uh, so now I'm going to go through with the kneaded eraser and uh, start to map out where the lights are going to go. Um, it's best when applying the white material to remove the layer of graphite underneath that as much as possible because when there's a layer of the ebony pencil or if you're using charcoal it's the same way if there's that layer underneath it it can mix with the white and be kind of less effective so I'm just kind of run through here now but I'm, I'm thinking about continually contributing to the form it's not just cleaning off material but is this an opportunity for me to des describe something about the form of the leaf and it might be that in this area of this translucency that I'll actually get back down more to the just the natural tone of the gray paper uh, but we'll see we'll have to do some kind of manipulating of the form in a bit I think I want to erase this out and actually I'm going to kind of really kind of lighten up that line at quite a bit more. I'm going to use I'm going to use the chalk to redefine this so I may end up having to erase this line out and replace it with the white chalk. We'll see. Oh, so who is the Jerry's brand? That that would make sense if that's why I have it. Cuz I would have got this gotten this at Jerry's. And darken this background a little bit up here. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Honestly, there's. I feel like sometimes there can be, you know, an issue with attention. Like I'll just, my, I'll be working on an area, my brain will just snap to another area for whatever reason, and I just let that happen. Okay, so now I want to go through and lay in another pass of these darks. Now that I have this dark area, I can add some richness to it by going into finding areas where they're even darker. And and to help each like as I'm working on this line here to read as a kind of thin shadow of that skeleton of the leaf, um, I'm breaking up that edge and still utilizing the side of the pencil so it's a little bit softer. Because I don't want this to read as a line. I want it to read as a thin shadow. And it's really tricky when it essentially is a line. But um, you know, somehow I think as as you play around with it, you'll you'll get a feel for that. Because um, again, if this was if this gets read as a line, the brain would be confused because it said oh, it's the center of this leaf, it's the skeleton of the leaf. But I'm reading it as a line, which should be an edge, and um, and it starts to break apart on the page. That's why edge variation is so critical in when you're drawing kind of realistically. If your goal is realism. Uh, Brian Art 17 is asking what paper this is a Strathmore gray toned paper that I'm using I really like it um, throughout the series I've also used Hanamula paper which has been that was really fantastic as well uh, so you want to find what works best for you um, there's both the material that you're using and the kind of the, your your touch of the material can impact that so you might be an artist that really struggles with this material, but thrives with a different one. I think it's, it's important to experiment. Um, so one of the things I'm also thinking is I'm laying in more material here. This is going to be an opportunity for me to actually pick up more with my blending stump. And now I can use that to uh, make additional kind of passes, make add a little bit more detail. I uh, do a lot of rolling of the material on my fingers. Those create more naturalistic looking marks. Um, and it also, um, it also gives me new kind of new material to work with.
feel like I'm, I'm scowling right now. So if it does, if, if I, <laughs> it reminds me of when we would do uh, uh, self-portraits in class. And, you know, there'd be times when we, you, you, the students would share their work and I already put mine up there for when I was in class. And I would just look angry. <laughs> And it's because, you know, it's just natural to try to kind of squint and focus and kind of scrunch up the face. And so we were just kind of capturing the intensity of our expressions as we, as we were studying ourselves. And then in the end, our drawings would just look, look angry, <laughs> discontent. And so I feel like that's happening now. You know, we do these things, we do these exercises where we would draw each other. Um, and... You know, we just kind of just be scowling at each other as we're trying to observe observe one another. All right, in here, I feel like I can really get dark in here. So as you can see, I'm letting those edges really be soft right now. Now I've, I've, I started the drawing by, by focusing on kind of laying out the contour. And I've shifted into to working in the center of the form, and I'm kind of working my way out to find those edges again. Um, so we end up drawing those edges many, many times to, to find the correct one, you know, really what works. I'm letting those edges kind of just diffuse and get lost and try to find, create some of these lost and found edges that um, add to the sense of realism and atmosphere in a drawing. So if, if your goal is realism, and that's not the goal for every artist, right, but in this case it is for me, um, if that's the goal, then edge variation is really something that's critical. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I just kind of move to this background because it requires less thought. And so this is a way for me to kind of clear my head a little bit, um, kind of wipe the mental slate clean, remind myself to breathe, So now what I think I want to do is I think I want to kind of address these areas here. Like I said, those light areas I think are ultimately going to be um, just the tone of the paper, the natural tone of the paper. So for, for example, as I hear, I can see, see that the leaf is lighter in value than this background. So rather than lightening up that part of the leaf, I'm going to darken the space around it and kind of erase that form out. Just rely on the natural tone of the paper. And then switch to this kind of negative drawing approach where I'm rendering the leaf by drawing the space behind it. So I think, and what, the reason I'm kind of doing this is I want to, if anything, I want to prioritize dropping the value, making it darker um, and so that um, I have even more room to play with in my tonal range. Um, it means that, you know, if I want to increase the contrast, you know, I, I'm like, I can only go so white with the white charcoal. Um, and then so by, by bringing everything else down in value, um, I increase my chance that the, the tonal range I establish with the white when I come in later that, that the tonal range will be sufficient. So, um, uh, Brian Art, 117. Uh, you know, I do have a website. It's scottmeyerart.com. So M-A-I-E-R, that's my last name. And you'll find my contact information there if anybody wants to email me. I've had a few conversations with some of you, um, some really great ones. Um, so I love hearing from you all. Um, or you could send something. I've also I've gotten, had more feedback from people through artistnetwork.com, just re uh, reaching out to customer service. Uh, and Jenny and the team there uh, forward them on to me. So now I'm kind of working my way around, but my, and my intention is to, to think about those edges. And you can see how what I'm, what I'm trying to do is pay attention to the contrast along that edge and create a, a constant variety. So here, for example, I'm light on the leaf, dark in that background. As I come up here, now it's reverse, where it's lighter in the background and darker on the leaf. And then right up here, I think we're going to have to shift that a little bit. 
I'm going to darken this background and then uh, lighten that. And I can kind of create some of that modeling just by kind of tapping with the eraser, doing some negative drawing in there. It's all very subtle, and when we get the um, when we get that white chalk in there, it's going to really make this thing kind of come to life. Uh, so I want to go back in here. It gets really dark, so let me try to get that notch established. There's this kind of dark cutout. How's that read? So it reads okay. If I need that to pop, I can't get any darker than what I've got here. I've really kind of pushed down as hard as I can on the material. If I can't do, if I can't go any darker and I want to increase that contrast, then what I have to do is pick up on that background. And see how that reads, okay. So doing kind of quite a bit of, kind of inventing, playing with that background, but in the service of expressing the form of the leaf. Now, my hope in this whole series is to really, um, you know, hope, you know, I'm, I'm trying to develop these skills again for myself, and 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 realize that you know the 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 thoughts about drawing, the process of drawing, is is kind of universal across the subject. You know, it's it's really easy to to kind of conceive of drawing a leaf as draw, different from drawing an apple or drawing a face. When in reality, it's all the same set of decisions. Drawing is drawing, and you can apply the same thought process to any subject. Um, and so that's why I like to vary the subjects. And then I you know, realize that I really ultimately, it's, it's about the approach to drawing, um, not the approach to drawing a specific subject. That, that's really criti critical here. So I'm going to do some negative drawing. I see that this area is kind of in light. so. I'm going to lift off some of that material and then focus on drawing this background here. If I lay that line down, I want to kind of feather it out into that background. I need to sharpen this up a little bit, and there we go. All right. So now as I'm working on that point, I'm really trying to think about how the line works with that. Um, at this point now, I'm thinking about trying to actually get rid of the line as much as possible. That line that we laid down earlier that defined that edge, I'm going to try to get rid of that. And then I'm going to be selective about where I make that more explicit. And then along in here, it gets difficult to determine the value relationship between the leaf and that background. I feel like this now, I can make this a little bit darker. So again, now we're flipping that dynamic where we have light leaf against dark background, dark leaf against light background here. Is that, that my, my hope is in that in the end, this is going to read as really kind of a three-dimensional leaf in floating in, in space there. Um, and Heather is asking a great question as we were just talking about that. How do you know when to darken that background? Um, you know, in, in part, I'm, lo I'm looking at the reference photo. You know, I can see over here, for example, it's very clear that the relationship in the reference photo is light to dark. Um, and, and then other areas, like up in here, it becomes a bit more subtle. Um, and so then, then the question is, do I exaggerate that, that, um, that tonal relationship? or not. Um, and then over, as I come over here, that, that gray, it's interesting because you get these darker shadows. The shadows are darker than the background, um, but the background, the, the, but then the lights are lighter in value than the background. 
So if I choose kind of a middle gray back in here, going a little bit darker than the tone of the paper, that's going to serve that. It's this, this is lighter than this part. This will be lighter than that. And that fluctuation, I think, is going to really bring this to life. Okay, so you can see I have this modified kind of um, overhand grip that gives me the precision I want, but I'm still using the side of the pencil. Come down here, and that's going to be white later. So I'm just seeing where is it dark against that background. And I'll fill in that gap between. All right. Whew, gotta remember to breathe. <laughs> Um, Judy is saying, my drawing has really improved with these classes, which I enjoy, unfortunately, with my slow internet, living rural, uh, not able to upload photos all the time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know there's, uh, internet can be an issue, but I'm glad you're enjoying these. I've seen uh, some of you, uh, you kind of batch upload. Uh, so, I'll, you know, somebody will post, you know, 10 drawings from previous episodes all at one time, which is cool to see as well. And I try to do my best to go back in and and see them. All right, and as we come down here, there's some really interesting kind of these kind of S curves in this cross and you know, a ribbing of the, of the material that I want to try to suggest. And I don't want those to be too strong. One of the things that ha is really easy to happen is, is when we get locked on to specific details, there's a tendency to, to want to exaggerate them. But I have to ask myself, when I first saw this leaf, is that something that popped out? And it wasn't. It's something that I came to an observation of later on. And so I want my drawing to be, you know, to kind of align with the subtlety there. All right, we're getting close, almost to the point where we can start to add the, uh, uh, add the white. Now I'm just kind of going through and refining some of these forms using a lot of these circular marks because I don't want directional marks to be prominent in the drawing. So I need to do a quick check and make sure that they're not being too, they're not too strong. And then I come under here. I think I want to kind of intensify this the frame here of the leaf. Darken this part here in particular, really go dark on this one. Now kind of feather it out a little bit. Um, Anisha Shaw, so if you look, you have a question about where to upload. So if you, um, if in the description below, you'll find a URL to artistnetwork.com and in particular it's going to be the link to this individual show page so each episode has its show page on Artist Network and so if you click on that link it's going to take you there and at the bottom of the page you'll see the discussion thread to upload it so you'll see the comments and you can just type a comment if you'd like um, and some of you have done that and then you can also attach uh, an image to, to that all right How are we doing here? I think, all right, I think we are at the point now where, where we can start to add that white. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of erase out some of these forms, and in particular, you know, as much of the outline as possible. Actually, let me see, I'm gonna darken this background here. So I've lost some of the form, and that's okay. You know, I've lost that edge, but you know, I've not, when since you've already done that edge multiple times, it's easier to get to the correction. Um, uh, right in here, actually, that's going to be light. Just erase that edge altogether. 
going to erase that, that tip of the, the leaf down here all together and reestablish that. I'm just going to get rid of this. I have just a subtle indication of where that point was, so I can where where it was, so I can find it again. All right. Brian Art. So if, if um, yeah, I'll see. I'll, I'll what I'll try to do is I'll I'll put a link in, in the description at the end of this to to my website if you need to find it. Um, one of the things that I also observed is. You know, there's, there's the edge of the leaf is catching the light in some areas, um, which, which I think it's going to be really interesting to try to, try to capture. All right. So I'll start up here. Use the side of the pencil, and I'm just going to use the weight at first of, of it. And kind of feather it out up here, come down here, and there's light kind of catching on that, that edge of that, that spine. And this is an opportunity where I need to find that edge using the white now. And as I come down here, I can see that um, the light is catching on the edge of it, so it, right along in here, there's a light edge against that ebony pencil. I really like the way that's reading there. Uh, and I can do that right up here as well. And I find that I have to kind of roll this in my fingers. Sometimes it slips on the, um, on the ebony pencil, that layer. It's one of the reasons that it's helpful to to erase that down before I lay it on there. Um, let's see, I'm just going along the edge. Ah, here's another one. Where it just kind of catches along that edge. And then what I can do is kind of work that background again right up to that edge. And actually, I'm going to leave this the way it is for now, and I may end up adding a little bit more if that's if there's not quite enough if it's not reading as translucent in here. I'm going to add this onto it later, but I'm going to make that decision as I get through it, as I get through the drawing. And so I can see again the light is catching just along that that rim of the leaf, and. And as you can see, as I made that mark, I'm gradually rolling the pencil. Um, and, and it helps to do that with a chalk because it can, it can start to kind of slide on the surface. And it, it kind of also keeps that the material kind of rounded. And then this whole area is light against that dark background. And you can see this is the opaque part where I can um, be more kind of liberal with the... Uh, uh, the use of the, the material. But. Alice is asking, could you have light started with the light? Absolutely, you could have. Um, and, and in part, one of the reasons I started with um, started with the dark is that I tend to I, I tend to be more biased towards lighter areas. I find myself always making things lighter than they should be. So I'm trying to force myself to go darker to increase that tonal range. And so part of it is just to deal with my own natural tendencies and address those, which is why I started this way with adding the darks first. And I just find that I ultimately end up having a richer um, contrast to the drawing overall when I approach it this way. All right, so right in here, it's kind of tricky. It's not quite as quite as light, so I'm just going to be really gentle with this. And a few areas where you know it's kind of catching on the the ribs there. And 
and I can suggest some of the texture. I'm not going to get too fussy with this with this texture in here, but you know this is again where you can define for yourself how far do you want to take the precision. You know, do you really want to lock in and get all the details in there? Or are you comfortable um, leaving it suggested more? Um, and we we're each going to have our own take on that. Um, so right in this this point is really the this is where it's at. I want to get rid of this outline. I think actually what I'm going to do is just soften this edge all together and then keep working this edge. Then what I can do is use my ebony pencil and kind of work from the outer edge right up to find that edge and really sharpen that up. And use circular marks. I don't want directional marks that follow along that contour. I just want to sharpen this a little bit. Hello, Lindy. Perfectly fine to be late today, so hope you're having a great day. If you're joining us late, then welcome. Um, you can rewatch this whole drawing from start to finish. It's going to go up as a recording when it's all done. Um, you'll find additional information in the description below. So I noticed that I'm not talking as much right now because I'm, I'm more focused now uh, on the details and that requires a bit more concentration. But if you do have any questions about what's going on, just let me know. Uh, right in here, I see this light catching along this edge. But yeah, this is really all about that edge variation. We started with that line. Now we're going through and we're, we're going to massage that. It's disappearing in some areas. It's becoming more prominent. It's dark against light. It's light against dark. We're constantly changing things. And that's what's going to add to the realism. <laughs> right there, I'm trying to get that to lay down and I can't because the ebony pencil is providing a barrier. There. Just had to work that a little bit. Um, Oh, Vicky's asking about the colored pencils. I have not been able to give them much attention lately. So, but I do need to work on those. So for those of you who are wondering, I just, it's one of those things that I've been kind of ex experimenting with. We've had some questions about working with colored pencil, but I don't know a whole lot about them. And so I am experimenting and playing around with them. Okay, now as I come down here, yeah, I want this to be light against that gray. And that's what I love working about. I love about working with this gray paper is that um, it really helps to push that tonal range. If I had done this on white paper, I, it, it could have looked good. It just would have looked different. Um, it would have, in general, it would have been keyed up lighter in in general. So. Um, and this edge is really kind of tricky, so what am I doing here? And this is light, but not as bright as this, so I just want to keep that in mind. As I'm working on this, I'm going to have part of my mind focused on what's happening there. So I'm just using the weight of the pencil here, very light touch, to pull that out, pull out the, some of that light over here. And if you're all are interested, I don't know if you're aware of the, the competitions that we have at Artist Network, but you know, we have the Strokes of Genius competition, which is a drawing one. And, uh, I believe Juliet Aristides was the, uh, the, the last juror we had. And just some amazing work that gets submitted for those competitions. So kind of keep that in mind for yourselves.
So as I'm looking at this, I'm evaluating, this is not reading as that translucency that I had hoped. So I'm gonna have to add a little bit of, of light, um, you know, kind of lighter value to that. And the same with up in here. Um, but I do want to kind of convey that kind of blotchiness. So I'm kind of trying to be kind of more erratic with my marks here. And then I think I do want to define this edge a little bit more. Just so this is all very light. Again, I don't want this to read as as, in, as, as in, intense as that area over there. And then you can see I've, I've done most of this drawing without using that tripod grip, this grip here. Um, you, can, you can get so much done with the side of the pencil, pencil and I, I find that it, le it lends itself to more kind of naturalistic marks. It, re they, it just leads to more kind of uh, marks that, that feel naturally formed. And it feels more realistic in a way. So something to play around with. All right. Uh, can you use the blending stump on the white charcoal? You absolutely can, although you might find it most beneficial to have a blending stump that is dedicated to the white. Um, so if I take this, it's already loaded with the graphite, and I come in here, it's really just going to kind of muddy that up. It'll smooth things around, as you can see, but it's just going to mix those two together, and it may not be what you want. So um, just kind of just to be aware of that. So now I want to go back in this area, and I think I just want to lighten up some of this area. And as you're making your kind of irregular marks, as you're working on the blotchiness, try to resist any sense of, of pattern. It's very natural for us to want to create rhythm, rhythms in the drawing and create uh, repetitive patterns. So just uh, double, double check that as you're doing that. How does that read? Is that, I'm trying, I feel like that reads as more translucent now. Um, I'm expressing the nature of the leaf a bit better. Yeah, so just using the tone of the paper didn't really do it. Um, it's kind of blending on top of the ebony pencil to help them unify. Unity is important, and you see, you see that's why I kind of do a lot of wiping down of the drawing, with, I build up a lot of material on my hand, because that helps to unify the marks, make them all feel like they're um, kind of part of the same object. It's so easy for these marks to kind of jump off the page, um, creating too much contrast. We haven't talked about it, but make sure you're stepping back and looking at it from a distance. And as we come down in here, actually, I think I don't. I don't think I need to be, uh, you know, too heavy with this in here. Just a little bit of light in some of these areas can go a long way. So hopefully at this point you're seeing more in the leaf and you're observing the, the reference um, you know, perhaps more closely. And that's, like I said, you know, part of the whole drawing process. When we look at this, when we encounter a leaf in the, or this reference photo, our initial response is to, to identify it as a leaf. Our brain takes all of that specific information and processes it, processes it for us and just sending to our conscious mind an understanding that this is a leaf. So in a split second, it's making thousands of observations and it's telling our conscious mind, you don't need to be aware of all of those individual observations. You just need to know that that's a leaf. Um, and the more you draw, the more time you spend with it, the more you start to analyze all of those individual decisions that the brain just does on its own. Um, and so as you, as you work through your drawing, hopefully that you become um, more closely kind of attached to the object. You understand it more deeply. And I think for me, that's really the power of drawing. Um, it, it forces us to kind of slow down and 
and really connect with the objects that we're, we're working with. And the drawing process is really effective in, in doing that, bringing focus to the mind. All right, how do we feel? I feel like that's working out pretty well. I think I might just need to bump up the contrast in a few areas. You know, right in here, for example. I don't know how much darker I can go. Um, all right, great. Getting some good comments here. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying the class. Uh, just seeing. Uh, so this white, what am I using right now? This is a white chalk that I'm using right now. I do have a white charcoal, and honestly, I don't know what it is, but I don't believe it's an oily or waxy substance. It doesn't feel that way. It's very dry. I believe it's more of a, of a pastel, um, like a chalk pastel versus an oil pastel. So I'm just going through, and I'm going to kind of pump up the contrast in some of these areas and see if I need to darken the background. So for example, rather than go lighter here, I think this whole background can go darker to bump up the contrast and define that edge a bit more. So now I'm just kind of making some editorial decisions to help define the, the leaf a bit more clearly. And I don't like that that edge is so kind of soft. I think I might need to actually come back in with a line to sharpen that up. So where else is it falling apart too much? Let's see, I, I like the way, I like the way this is reading here. Actually, I think it's missing something. What is it missing in this? That, that light on that edge. It's a little bit tricky because I have too much too much material laid down. There we go. That feels better. What did I do? I just ruined it. Let those blend together too much. All right. Let's see. And I feel like that works out. I was going to continue to work that edge, but I'm just kind of scanning the drawing. I'm looking at the, the smaller scale version. It's what you're observing. And I'm trying to evaluate what needs to happen. And how does that work? If I drop in a line just around that edge. I'm just trying to be selective with the edges, with the lines. And I think actually right in here, I want to bring more attention to this. So I'm going to use a line up against that white edge to sharpen it up and pump up that contrast. And then the same with down in here. So this is what I was talking about in terms of being selective with the line work. And I think what actually what I want to do is darken this background in here now to draw attention to the, the luminosity of that leaf, not by making that lighter, but by darkening the space behind it. I'll see how that reads. But I think we're pretty close to done. So again, we meet every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. This is Drawing Together. My name is Scott. My last name is Meyer. Um, with Artist Network. We've got more shows coming. Look for Gigi Chen's painting together in acrylics um, starting next Thursday. Um, we're going to have some teaser videos coming out about that pretty soon, so I'm really excited about that. Um, Uh, Jane is asking, did I freehand draw this? Yes, so this is, if you're, if you're just joining us, this whole recording goes up um, uh, as, you know, so you can see the whole thing from start to finish, and we'd love for you to join us, follow along with us. Again, we do this every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, tell your friends, because we think drawing is awesome. Everybody should do it. Um, yeah.
but I'm feeling pretty good about it. Oh, I didn't really do anything with the stem. Uh, there's a little bit of light kind of catching up on here that I think we can, can draw attention to. There we go. All right, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Where am I getting lost? Right in here, that's really getting lost. So what am I do? What do I need to do here? That whole edge kind of disappears, gets lost entirely, and I feel like that's perhaps too much loss. So this is a great opportunity to throw in a little bit of a line to define that edge and be selective about that. But if, I'm, if I was consistent with this line around that whole edge, it would really flatten out. It's that line variation that becomes really critical in terms of creating a sense of depth and life in a drawing. So play around with that, practice that. Um, uh, Brian Art 17 if you want to share your work at checkout, go to theartistnetwork.com. I'd love to see you post some stuff there. Um, or if you want to find my email, again, it's, it's scottmeyerart.com, or is it scottmeyerfineart.com? I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I should know this. It used to be MeyerArt.com, uh, M-A-I-E-R-A-R-T.com, and I changed it. I believe if you type in MeyerArt.com, it'll lead you there. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, check that out there. Um, you'll find more information on ArtistNetwork.com, and you'll find, find more stuff there. So I want to thank you all for joining us. Um, I want to check other questions here. I'm going to hang out for a few minutes to make sure I get all your questions. So I see one here um, about sharpening. I use a razor blade to sharpen my materials. Um, so I just take a box cutter, and I just simply shave it like this, and that's how I do it. And that allows me to kind of expose more of the core of the pencil and I can use the side of it more effectively so that I have more of it shown so I can really lay it on its side and get a nice broad mark um, and, and also maintain a sharp point when I need it. Um, um, and if, if you are new and you do want to see, I see uh, somebody posted here about past episodes. You can find all of them on artistnetwork.com. You'll find the Drawing Together page. So if you go to artistnetwork.com slash drawing together, um, on the home page, you'll see drawing together right at the top there. It'll take you to a landing page that has links to all the past episodes. You can also find it on our YouTube channel. So if you want to subscribe there, you're going to get notifications. Um, and you can find the playlist of all the drawing together episodes, starting with episode number one, which was the cup. Uh, so uh, check those out. You don't need to see them in order. So there, there's, it's not a sequential situation here. They don't build on one another. So just jump in with the subject that you find most interesting to you. Um, I'd love to see, uh, you see you watch all those old episodes. Um, so thank you all. I'm really glad that you could join me. Um, again, I'm not looking, I'm not seeing any additional questions. So I think, oh wait, Judy, Judy Moyers, how do you, how does one decide whether to darken up to light or just have a dark line. Um, that is something that I feel like it's it's kind of intuitive to you. Um, you know, so I'm using the reference image as much as possible and just observing the value relationships. So for example, we know in the reference photo that this is light against a darker background. So I wanna make sure that there's a light and dark relationship there. Over here, it became a bit more difficult to see, especially because there's a high color contrast. When you have that gold against that blue, you can see a strong contrast there, but the value relationships aren't all that strong. So I, and I chose to use a line to define that edge there. Um, and it, so it's kind of a way of feeling it out. And you, and you may decide you want to be more heavy on a line or less heavy in your line work. Um, but it's, it's helpful to know really what function the line serves. Um, and you want to kind of, if you're going for realism, you want that to be in service of the, the form, the volume. Does it read as a three-dimensional form? If the line is too heavy, it can sometimes flatten things out. So you just want to be, kind of be selective there. So, um, 
Let's see. I see some questions. How do you just how do you sketch a hood over your head? I'm not quite sure. You'd have to have to look at it. So it's really the same process that we use. Drawing is about a set of decisions that you make, um, and those decisions can be applied to any subject. So that's the goal here: is that we practice our skills, we we develop our skills, and we challenge ourselves each week to build that confidence that we can address anything. And so this isn't how you draw a leaf. This is how you draw everything. I'm just happening to draw a leaf right now. Um, and, and this is giving me particular challenges that I can apply to everything else. So hopefully this is giving you confidence and, and this idea that it's, it's, all, it's about drawing itself. And in each subject you encounter, you're, you're going to go through the same set of decisions as an artist. So I want, you, I want you to be able to build that confidence that you can tackle anything. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying these. Hello from Lakewood, Mary C. I taught down there at Red Rocks Community College for several years. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, so thank you all. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, Karen is asking, do you provide information before each session as to what materials, gray, drawing, paper, etc.? Yes, I do. So that's going to be in the description. I'm actually going to work on next Wednesday soon. My hope is to get that up there today, um, and you'll be able to see what materials I'll be using for that. But you'll find that in the description below, what materials I used for that episode. Um, so... Thank you all. I'm going to sign out. Looks like we have all the questions answered. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, um, go to artistnetwork.com and sign in there, um, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. So thanks. Have a great weekend.